You're listening to Ignite Your Success, a podcast that inspires fitness professionals to build a strong business that enables them to serve more people and engineer the lifestyle they desire. It's Brad Shepard here, and together with Jason Yubanowicz, we're best known for running Trainer HQ, a community of passionate and profit-hungry fitness business owners that make a massive difference in others' lives every day. Each episode will unpack for you exactly what's working and deliver best practice strategies so you can confidently grow your business and make a huge impact. Hello and welcome to another edition of Ignite Your Ultimate Success podcast. I'm here with the owner of my gym that I train at, as a matter of a fact, Mr. Jono Snape, and I like to call him, or everyone calls him, the big Snape dog. How are you, Snape dog? I mean, I'm good. It's, it's good to be here. I actually feel like a, a bit of a rapper in this, in this studio. I feel like I'm going to drop some beats in here. It's amazing. <laughs> you look like it, man, and you, 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 you sound crispy. And with a name like that, mate, there's, this it. comes with high expectations. <laughs> it does, mate. We'll see if I can deliver. <laughs> well... As discussed, I'm a very proud member of, of your gym, CrossFit Torian, was inducted just quietly, people, into the, the Torian Hall of Fame last year as a 10-year member. And uh, I remember. <laughs> I, uh, but, mate, I've been really looking forward to this because, you know, I guess you know, being in the industry and, and having a look at what yourself and, and Mike have built uh, over this time, you know, just really impresses me. I love being a part of it. So I guess I'd love to hear it from you firsthand. Look, you're not from the fitness industry. So can you shed a bit of light on the background on, on how yourself and Mike got together with the concept and uh, you not being from the industry? So let us hear about it. Yeah, I guess um, I'm a little bit of a, a, a chopper read, you know. I've written a bestseller and I'm semi-bloody illiterate. So, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I come from a, uh, a marketing background. So I studied uh, business at QUT and majored in marketing and advertising. And a lot of the electives that I studied were focused on multimedia. So things like photography, filmmaking, web design. And then I went on to study um, some postgraduate courses in search engine marketing um, when I was living over in LA. So my, my first kind of real job out of university after I graduated was with an advertising agency. Um, and this was just a really great opportunity for me to, I guess, uh, you know, work with some really great brands and on some really great campaigns. And ultimately that led to a job with Tourism and Events Queensland and, um, that was one of my clients at the time. So, and this was again, just a, a massive opportunity for me because not only did I get to work on, you know, some great tourism products and campaigns, I got to work with a team that had really uh, embraced um, digital technology and the power of digital marketing. And um, this was something I was sort of really interested in at the time. And, um, and beyond that, I also, uh, Worked for TEQ in Los Angeles. Again, another amazing opportunity for me getting to uh, work on some, you know, huge brands over in America, um, some great products. And it's just a massive market to be involved in if you're interested in marketing. And then when I eventually came back to Australia, I was just um, working part-time doing some consultancy work. And then I eventually took a job um, with QT in their marketing department. Wow, so heavy marketing uh, background, heavy marketing theme, and I also recall that you also had a passion. I mean, back in the early days when Facebook was popular, pre Instagram, all the rest of it. I mean, you even built up a, a strong page of just posting really inspirational um, clips and so forth. Yeah, so I, I've always considered myself uh, I've, like I've loved technology, and I've always considered myself an early adopter. So, anytime you know new technology comes along, I've got to have the latest tech. I've got to have the latest version. I've got to try the latest digital platform and I had Facebook before it was even available in Australia. So I had a friend over in, in the States who went to a university there who arranged a university password for me because at the time you had to be from a university. Um, so they created this fake uh, email for me and I had Facebook and I was playing around on Facebook before it was even available in Australia and I remember I, you know, when I was over in the States I bought an iPhone and got it hacked so you could use it in Australia. So I've always been obsessed with you know tech and the latest tech and I think um you know from that I, I you know I developed a real passion for kind of marketing and I think you know that that passion for marketing was really you know born from my love of brands and um 
yeah, the earliest memory I have of, of this was kind of putting on my first pair of Nikes, you know, when you're a little kid and you put on that first pair of Nikes and it, and the way it sort of makes you feel invincible. And I sort of, um, you know, I remember being fascinated by how a brand can make someone feel that way. And what I've learned over the years is that this core principle of creating an emotional response um, is something all the best brands in the world do and really focus on. So Rolex is an example. You know, people aren't buying that watch um, because they love the way it tells time. They're, they're buying it for a, for a status symbol. And Volvo aren't selling you, you know, great, great cars. They're selling you safety. And Nike, you know, isn't selling you shoes. They're selling you athletic confidence. And so this whole concept of selling an idea and, 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 and backing that up with a great product um, was something that really resonated with me at the time. Man, I love it. Such powerful words and so true for anyone. Um, and again, ba- linking this back to the fitness industry for anybody to keep thinking about how do you keep trying to invoke that emotional response in, in your ideal customer, your ideal client. So not from the fitness industry, but you did hook up with Coach Mike and tell me about your guys' unique connection and your relationship. Yeah, so... <sighs> CrossFit Torian started back in, in 2015 and um, my CrossFit journey started about two years um, before that and I joined uh, a gym called CrossFit Lift. Yep, um, who probably was, the same time as me. It would have been, mate. I think I was, um, yeah, I think I was part of the sort of founding 50 membership base. Um, so uh, CrossFit Lift was owned by my now business partner, Mike Towner. Shout out to Big Tow Tow. Big Mike. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a legend. So um, I pretty quickly uh, became friendly with Mike um, and I was helping him with some uh, digital marketing initiatives to help grow his business. And I just sort of casually said to him one day, if you're ever thinking about opening another gym, let me know. I might be interested in being involved. So fast forward 12 months, you know, I'm completely drunk on the CrossFit Kool-Aid, full froth. <laughs> <laughs> I get this call from Mike and he says, mate, remember that, um, you know, conversation we had? Well, I found this space. I want you to come and check it out. So um, so I go down to this warehouse in uh, Bowen Hills and um, can, I, can I swear on this podcast? You can, sir. So, mate, we go down to this warehouse and it's fucking massive, <laughs> right? I'm talking aeroplane hangar massive. And... Um, yeah, we're, we're sort of sitting there, you know, and you have to remember at the time, um, CrossFit gyms were predominantly, you know, pretty rough and ready, you know, small hole in the wall type operations. So we're looking at this space and thinking this is just, you know, an excessive amount of space for, for a CrossFit gym. So, um, so while we were kind of deliberating, I guess, the opportunity um, and the enormity of the space and the financial commitment that obviously comes with that, um, I started to get really excited about uh, the opportunity presented from a branding perspective, um, but also what we could do logistically and creatively in that space as well. So, um, you know, something to differentiate ourselves. So everyone will probably remember the massive uh, murals that we did on the walls. Um, that was something, you know, in my mind that was really simple, but um, that went viral around the internet after we did that and really helped us launch that gym you know, raise awareness and, um, you know, start to tell a story about what this gym was going to be like. Um, so the vision for that, that gym was really formulated around, let's do something big, let's do something bold, let's change the game. Um, and, and I really wanted to wow people when they, when they came into the space. Um, and I knew that I could execute that on a brand and marketing perspective and I knew that my, my business partner, Mike, could really execute that well on a coaching and product product um, perspective so so yeah long story cut short I invested every dollar that I had uh, <laughs> quit my job and um, and it felt like one of those real uh, burn the ships moments you know um, and the rest is history as they say so yeah it was this real yeah field of dreams moment um, yeah. that sort of you know came to reality and you know if you build it they will come <laughs> And that they did. So at some point in time in that journey, obviously I was like yourself, I was a member at CrossFit Lift and just a bit over 10 years ago when I, you know, I'd been lifting weights, throwing around iron for almost 30 years and been playing around with CrossFit 
movements and that with in, in training clients and all the rest of it. And I'm like, hey, I'm, I want to go and you know do CrossFit for a period in time you know, and check it out and actually get fully immersed, not just play around with it. And yep. that Mike's gym was the only place CrossFit lift that did a 5 a.m. class and that's what suited me. And it was like, all right, beauty, here we go. Jumped in for a month. And after a month, I was like, I'm hooked, man. This is like, yep. <laughs> this is my jam. I It'll love get this. <laughs> So just like yourself, drank the Kool-Aid and, you know, 10 years later, still still trying to get better at it every day. <laughs> but I remember, the again, the conversation with Mike and he was telling me about it. He goes, we've got this huge space and um, and it was like, yeah, it was it was that thing. Hey, it was like, yeah, we've got to go for it. And and that's ex- how you described it from the outside looking and exa- exactly how it played out, you know. It was like there was this hype that built around it. And it was in, at, a, at a time, I guess, in that space as well, where it was gaining in terms of its its popularity and and you know becoming more mainstream as well. Which you know, the, I guess, the timing on that was was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. There was this real groundswell that uh, CrossFit had had created, and we were able to kind of capitalize that and take what was already existing in that space and just do something. In, in you know, in my mind, you know, bigger and better. Yeah. Now you had this big fuck off joint, but straight away you just didn't fill it with members, did you? That took a while, didn't it? <laughs> no, I think um, yeah, it's always a nervous time, right? You you invest so much time, uh, money into this thing that you think is great, and you just you just hope people are going to show up. It's like it's like a birthday party or having a party. You know, the worst nightmare is that no one shows up. So. Um, yeah, for a few months, I guess it was, um, you know, we created a lot of hype um, and we had a great influx of new members, but we had a certain target that we had to hit to cover our expenses. And for me, I just quit my job. So, um, you know, we needed revenue coming in to, to justify that that decision. So, um, yeah, we had, a, we had a great influx of new members and I think we got to our kind of, you know, break even point within the first couple of months, um, which was amazing. I think, um, you know... <laughs> Funny story is that I think for that first, you know, few months, there was only one person in the 5 a.m. class. So <laughs> we were promoting, you know, group classes and it's going to be big, awesome. Biggest gym in yeah, Australia. Big energy and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, there'd be there'd be one member in the coach and he was loving <laughs> his getting, you know, PTs for three months. So he's never been fitter. Um, but, uh, yeah, mate, it's, um, you know, we kind of hit, um, hit that break-even point pretty quickly and then sort of steadily grew um, over the years. And then we, we sort of peaked just before COVID around 400 members. Yeah, amazing. Great to watch. Now, we will talk more about marketing and, and brand awareness because I know it's a, such a large passion of yours. But even from the beginning, that was a, that was a focus of yours, wasn't it, to, to really build that um, brand recognition and get it out there? Could you describe that a bit? Yeah, so the, the way I look at it is, you know, um, and, you know, why I love Mike as a business partner is, you know, he was very good at building the product and then I was very good at shining a light on that. And that's how I sort of saw the relationship um, uh, between us two. And I guess, um, you know, to delve into that question about like marketing and, you know, what I love about that and what I was able to do with this gym, um, you know, there's a few things I, I kind of live by in my, I guess, um, you know, philosophies. Um and number one is, you know, build brands through your marketing communications and not commodities. So for me, building a brand um, is all about making commitment to being something and creating an experience for your consumers that goes beyond products and services. And, you know, as an example, this is something that Apple do, in my opinion, you know, better than anyone. Um, and that's how they've able, been able to sort of charge huge prices for their products and build these you know, incredibly loyal, loyal customers. Like, unless I've, you know, missed something along the way, I don't see anyone uh, queuing up for the latest Samsung for three days. You know, With no disrespect to Samsung, by yeah, the way. Yeah, no disrespect. Um, but, yeah, and I think that's probably what really excited me um, about this opportunity. And, and the second, um, I guess, key thing that I was, you know, really passionate about and good at was, you know, creating content. And... Content in my eyes is king, and and if content is the king. Video is its crown. And um, if you want to build a really strong business um, in today's world, you have to be able to market through content um, creation. And you know with the rise of digital platforms and the popularity of it. That's where your customers are spending all their time. So you essentially need to fish where the fish are. And I loved as a passion, you know, being able to create content and photography and all those sorts of things. So I really saw this whole opportunity 
um, as a way to, I guess, just, you know, do all the things that I loved and build something that I was really passionate about. Mm. Such a great synergy too, because you look at that that relationship that exists there. We've got the technician and then we've got the, you know, the brand marketing expert and bring that together and you look at what occurs, you know, the synergy. It's not one plus one equals two. It's one plus one goes well beyond that. It's three, five, seven or, or, or greater. And that's, you yeah, know, that part's really uh, inspiring to see. Back yeah, to the gym Absolutely. Itself. I think, you know, to that you point, got- you know, I think that, um, you know, people sometimes ask us, oh, you know, how have you been able to do this? And I think it's been the unique combination that we've had. We've both got different sets of skills um, that complement each other, but we trust each other in that skill set to be able to deliver and execute well. Um, and, you know, I see it all the time. These, these gym owners who, they might be a PT, they start a gym, they get so sort of bogged down in the day-to-day runnings of the gym and training you know, training people and yes that stuff is super important right but you know it doesn't give them any time to do some peripheral things like marketing focusing on the business all those sorts of things so i think that combo was was very much key to key to our success yeah and something that just so powerful that we preach at trader hq is you got to have those elements of the working in and then the working on the business and you know, quite often when people are new to us, we see them, you know, a large percentage of their time and energy spent working in the business, servicing people, swapping time for money, whatever way you want to look at it. But there's the part which is the working on, which is just so powerful. And I guess the message for anybody is to go, hey, I don't have um, Snape Dog's flair for videography or, or marketing or brand awareness. The beauty of the modern day and age is these services and resources and things are out there. So you go, okay, how do I get creative enough to, you know, be able to f- find the right type of people that can produce this sort of stuff for me? Um, and once again, this stuff can be done at a pretty reasonable cost in this day and age. Yeah, absolutely. You need to know what you know, but more importantly, know what you don't know. And you need to be able to fill those gaps, um, you know, to be able to, to, to execute well. And it's getting easier and easier to, to fill those like technical gaps. Um, AI is the perfect example. Like I'm not a good writer, but I don't need to be anymore and I don't need to employ a copywriter anymore. I can just plug something into chat GP and I get world-class, you know, copy. So problem solved. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's great um, applications online that can help you, you know, create better content for Instagram, Facebook. You can, you can learn easy on how to edit videos and all these sorts of things. So, Know what you know, fill in the gaps if you can by upskilling or bring in resources to help you achieve those things. And hammer home that point. I mean, arguably, uh, I might be biased, but arguably, in my opinion, Australia's best and biggest CrossFit gym and facility. Um, How many in that that eight or so year journey, mate, how many classes have you taught yourself? (laughs) Zero. (laughs) And we've always just joked that I should jump in there because I feel like I could coach a class. I've done that many classes and been around so many great coaches. I think I've learnt by osmosis that, um, yeah, I could certainly run everyone through a pretty technical warm up at least, I think. Might be the 10 year anniversary. Hey, get you up there. And yeah. Mate, deck you yeah, yeah, yeah. We just had our ninth birthday. So I've got 12 months to prep. <laughs> <laughs> now, obviously great, great results but it always hasn't been smooth sailing you've you've in amongst this you've had to get up and and shift this mother trucker of a gym to a new location uh you've also battled the the dreaded COVID so tell us a bit about some of those those times yeah so the move um yeah the move was a scary one so essentially how that kind of happened was that the the location that we were in the property got sold new owners come in and they essentially wanted to to jack our rent up by, you know, 300, 400%. It was just absurd. So we just couldn't afford to stay there. And they were pretty set on, like, this is the rate. And if you don't like it, well, you've got to leave. So we, um, I guess, yeah, we're kind of worried because we're like, oh, man, it's such a big um, big space. We've invested so much money in fitting this out. And, you know, what is a massive gym killer is moving location. So if you move too far, um it just becomes inconvenient for your current members. And there's a there's a key ratio around like, you know, most of your member base will come from three kilometres outside your your physical location. So, you know, we're, we're lucky that we have a lot of people who travel even as far as Redcliffe for our gym. But um, generally speaking, location is key. Um, so the thought of moving that, you know, was, yeah, could have been, you know, super detrimental to the gym. But 
it turned out to be um, a massive positive because it um, we went around and looked for new spaces um, and eventually found this you know incredible space that it, it tucked away um, in behind News Corp there one of their old printing rooms um, which is you know the tour that you see today online but um, yeah I guess the moral of that story was that we were yeah thinking that this is the worst thing for our business and that it ended up being a massive positive so you know, the space came with, you know, upgraded facilities. It was a much, you know, better building. Um, we were able to, you know, make some upgrades. And, and and I guess the kicker and the great thing was it was only sort of 500 metres up the road. But, you know, members being members, some people complained about that. And I, was like, <laughs> no, I thought this, you know, we're thinking this is just a huge win, right? Like we're, we're 500 metres up the road. Like this is unbelievable. We found this great space. It's better. It's you know, we're going to get some new equipment. We're going to have more space to do more things. Um, but yeah, five hundred meters. Some people <laughs> kick it up a stink. It's uh, yeah, it's cool. I mean, I love the facility, and and I like the thing I like. You know, my ideal times early in the morning. You get in there at any time you go in there in the day. You just see people going for it. You know, there's people down the back that ollie lifting. There's people in the climbing ropes. There's yep. there's the class going on. There's there's always something happening, and I find that personally really inspiring. That's for sure. Yeah, and I love that, and that's what we create. It's all about you know big classes, big energy, motivating space, and um, yeah. To touch on your your point about COVID, um, another massive challenge uh, for us, um, uh, and I guess you know we you know during that time, obviously the news breaks, gyms are shutting down. You know the whole the whole world's ending, um, and you don't really know. I guess you start sort of getting, you know, really nervous about what the future holds for your business. And again, you look back. I've worked so hard, and this is you know could be crushing. Um, but I guess in that moment, it just came down to, you know, um, how hard you're willing to work to keep that business alive. So we, um, I you know, came up with a really, you know, fun strategy around just tying into this end of the world. I guess, scenario when we put together what we called survival packs, which is just all our our gym equipment. And, you know, we we worked out, all right, we can give out this many barbells, this many dumbbells, this many ab mats, and members can come and grab these survival packs to take home. And, you know, we partnered with Red Bull and you got a, you know, case of Red Bull with it. (laughs) And and we tried to make it a little bit kind of fun. Um, And then... uh, yeah, and then we sort of, I guess, did what you know a lot of businesses did, and I hate to you know say the buzzword, but we pivoted into just purely an online offering. So um, everything that was bricks and mortar, we tried to bring into the digital world, and then I just became a, a full time movie editor. So we were <laughs> dropping you know the workout of the day every morning with a new video, and then at the end of the week we were doing these cool hype raps, and you know we were running around. Uh, you know, dodging police, trying to get in these cool locations to like film, <laughs> make these videos look awesome and engaging and keep everyone motivated. Um, and yeah, we were, you know, driving outside our radius, you know, just, you know, for the gram basically, just to, <laughs> just to make it look amazing. And, uh. and we were just in, in fight mode because we were like, well, if we don't offer our members something during this time, you know, I, I can't expect them to stick around. So, um, yeah, so we came up with this strategy of just creating this like online community called Tory Land, which still kind of exists. Um, but yeah, it, it just worked incredibly well. Like for most people, it was the highlight of their day, sort of getting out, watching this video, being able to do a workout, posting your results, chatting with people. Um, and yeah, so it ended up being this 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 amazing, um, I guess, experience for everybody. And, and some people actually like look look back on it as like, oh, Torian Land was so awesome. Let's go back to that. You know? And <laughs> we were thinking, hang on, maybe we don't ever need to open the gym. the gym. We could just run this. But I was like, man, I can't keep up with all this video editing. I was just, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> it was hectic. And, and again, in firsthand experience, being a client of that, I was immersed in it and it was a great experience to be a part of. But yeah, you just feel really connected to the community. People, like you said, posting their, their results, but more importantly, hyping each other up. And that was the big part of it and you, you were getting around I remember you come around my place one day oh, like yeah. you were you were everywhere and uh, even to get the little feature you get get yourself five seconds on a video clip you're like there's my highlight you know so <laughs> yeah yeah it was really cool and, and a lot of people got to know uh, a lot of the other members during that time because you know I'd go around and like like you said I would go around to people's houses and you know film them working out doing touring land at their home and yeah, um, yeah it was it, it, it was really fun it was it was for that eight weeks, I don't think I've ever worked harder. Um, 
And would I do it again? Oh, I, I don't know. It was, it, it was pretty hard by the, by the end of the eight weeks. I was, I, was, I was pretty exhausted and ready to, you know, put that roller door back up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I guess that leads into the next part about community. So you built a really strong community there. Uh, the other thing I noticed as being part of it is inside the you know, 400 members, it's a big group of people we've got our sub communities in there so uh, shout out for example to the silverbacks that i'm a part of all the all the old fellas uh mostly the 5 a.m crew and um which again is like i just i find it highly motivating because we've got this this group of guys over the age of 40 into the 50s now and who just you know have bonded and found that that connection underneath the roof of of the greater community as well so tell us a bit about what your what you observe inside there yeah, mate, it, it, it's awesome. And that's, you know, that's one of the the perks of this, um, you know, business is that you're bringing people, like-minded people together. And then, you know, people are building these amazing, you know, relationships with each other. And it's, it's you know, you look back at some of the stats of the gym and there's, you know, we've had babies born out of the gym, you know, people getting married, um, you know, awesome relationships bad relationships you know um and it's quite funny because you know when people get together in the gym and then if, if they break out the biggest argument is like who gets the gym um but yeah it's it, it's really fun fun to be a part of that i'm a i'm a massive you know people person and i love adding value to people's lives and i guess it you know um uh, it goes back to what i was saying before you know sometimes i feel like the the fitness is very secondary to you know the experience that people are getting there from the, the community so yeah it's it, it's really fun to be a part of that and and it can be be a really great strength for a business and that was proved proven through COVID um, you know building a strong community and building that loyalty and and then that sort of um, yeah it can ensure your long-term business success. Yeah, and, and uh, you alluded to the fact of the people who are coming there as well, and there's been some great athletes come through and, you know, CrossFit Games representatives sending teams to the Games, all that sort of stuff in, in the journey. But I guess my observation is that it's a small part of the gym and for most of, of je- speaking very generally, is we've got a very a, a big mix of what, what we call gem pop style people, people that just love to come train, be part of the community. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, a lot of people look at touring and they think, oh, you know, I can't train there, you know, they, they see Roycey online, you know, who looks like he's carved out of stone, like, <laughs> like, like, a, like a Marvel <laughs> character, um, you know, throwing this enormous weight around. And that's actually a small, a really small percentage of, of what we do. As you said, 90% of our membership is, is people like me, the average Joe who are just in there to have fun and get fit. And when, when people come in for their first session and they're like, oh, I'm so nervous to be here. I'm like, don't worry, you're not going to be the worst. You're not going to be the best. You're going to fit in somewhere and just give it a chance and, you know, you'll find a friend and you'll you'll really enjoy the experience. So, you know, we have people from all ages, you know, um, you know, from teens to older ladies to older guys to, you know, who, who just use a broomstick instead of a barbell, things like that. So you just come in, you, you know, that's one of the great things about CrossFit is, is, you know, infinitely scalable. So what you see Royce doing, you can do a similar version of that that's more tailored to your physical ability or your sort of, you know, technical skills. So yeah, mm. it's, um, it's definitely not as scary as a, as it can be made out on social media. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely back that statement up. Let's switch to now your other business opportunities. Cause as a result of running Torrient on the gym, you put on your first in-house comp a number of years ago called the Torrient Pro You've now built that to what I probably understand as one of the biggest uh, CrossFit comps possibly in the Pacific or Southern Hemisphere. Could you shed some light on, on the Torian Pro for us? Yeah, so that event is just such a beast now, right? Um, it's essentially my full-time job is, um, is, is running that event now. So um, that event, as you said, started uh, – CrossFit Torian started 2015 and I think very shortly after that, we we launched the first Torian Pro and it was there were two reasons why we did the event one was to promote the gym um the second was to give the the elite athletes that we had in our gym another great platform to sort of sharpen their steel um at the time you know the way the CrossFit game season was structured it went open into regionals and there was a big gap of comps in Australia um, that gave those, you know, um, that emerging talent a really good competition to, um, you know, get better and sharpen their steel. 
Um, so instead of kind of lamenting the fact that there was nothing around, we just decided let's just go and do it ourselves. And um, so we launched that first year and um, a little unknown CrossFitter called Tia Claire Toomey shows up <laughs> um, and, and she just dusts the field like – Six from six events, like easy. I'm like, who is this? Dear Claire Toomey. Um, so obviously now she's gone on to win, you know, six CrossFit Games world titles and is, you know, the undisputed goat of everything. Um, but yeah, that, that event kind of exponentially, well, uh, not even exponentially, like slowly grew for the first few years. I remember thinking if we got an extra food truck or something, you know, well, it's a big upgrade for the <laughs> event. Um, and then in sort of 2019, uh, we had what I refer to as kind of like our breakout year. So we were all set to run the event at the gym again. And um, Royce uh, had become really good friends with Rich Froning at the time. And he had just sort of hit him up and said, do you want to come out and, you know, compete in this comp? And he was like, sure, man, let's do it. And and then once we'd kind of announced Rich was coming, it, you know, it was just all, all held essentially broke loose and um you know we were oh yeah we had people going how can we do this and we and we just thought that it would be such a travesty to, you know richard never been to australia um so it would be such a, a you know i guess um yeah injustice almost on the crossfit community to bring this guy out and we could only fit 300 people in that gym so yeah we um we took a bit of a leap of faith and, uh, and, and went out and met with the uh, facilities manager at the Pat Raft Arena, which is where the event is held now. And we were just looking around going, oh, man, like, you know, what are we doing? Like, this is crazy. It, a, it's expensive. B, how are we not going to make this look like an absolute ghost town? You know, you bring 300 people here, it's going to look ridiculous. Um, so... But anyway, we just, again, it was just one of those moments where we just backed ourselves and we went, all right, let's just go all in, make this mega. Um, and yeah, a bit of, bit of field of dreams in there. If you build it, they will come. And yeah, we just kind of kind of went for it. And um, yeah, it turned it up, you know, to be a, be a massive success for us and really launched us on a new trajectory of we were an independently run event and now we're uh, a sanctioned event and we're part of the overall CrossFit game season as a, as, as a semi-final you know, event, uh, which qualifies all the oceanic um, athletes to go to the CrossFit games. Yeah, wow. And uh, this just this past year, obviously every year I've seen it happen, it's been a huge success. How many spectators does it house over the few days that you run it? Um, so we get about 17,000 over the three days, um, which is, yeah, massive. So... If you go back to our early stats, I think our first CrossFit, well, the first Tour in Pro that we ran uh, was might have been close to 50 athletes, not even, and maybe like 100 spectators. There's probably more athletes than spectators on the first one. <laughs> um, and to now we get over 700 athletes and, you know, 17,000 spectators over the three days. And it's, you know, broadcast around the world. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's a pretty, you, you know, in the, in the thick of that event, yes, it's hectic. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, sometimes you sort of step back and think, oh, man, this is, you know, this is a pretty cool pretty cool journey and achievement. Yeah. Great great to watch. Great congratulations to you both on that. And then, I guess, back to the community side, this is where I see the community come out in full force. You've got the volunteers, all that sort of stuff, which makes yeah. it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're the MVPs of this whole operation. We have... Oh, when we put the call out, we get about 500 applicants um, for the volunteers, which is just, yeah, you're so humbled by that that people are willing to even, you know, do that for you, right, and give up their time to sort of, you know, help you, help you with this, yeah. this vision. Um, and, you know, we, unfortunately, we only sort of have spots for about sort of 250. Um, so it's a really, really hard <laughs> email to send. Um, you know, it's a great email to send to the people who get in, and then it's a really heartbreaking email to send to the people that don't get in because they take it so personally sometimes and it's like you know what can i do for next year to make sure i get in and it's like look it's it's not you it's me <laughs> trust me um it's just that we can't we physically can't fit like you know going back to that point i made when when we first walked into that venue and we were like how are we actually going to fill this place now we're at a point where the venue is too small uh, which is just you know crazy to think about in a few years that we've outgrown that venue um even to the point where we just 
we don't even have enough room to put out our volunteers. Like we've run out of space. So yeah. good problem to have, huh? Yeah, it's it, it's it's a great problem to have. But you know, um, you know we we want to keep growing that event, and I'd love to you know get to a point where five hundred you know volunteers get to um, you know apply, and we can say, yep, let's do it. Yeah, how good. So um, let's let's talk a bit about yourself and Mike as business owners now because we have a lot of people tuning into our channel who you know, are building their fitness business, some based underneath the roof of a gym, others run their own gym uh, facility, studio, whatever that might look like. And then we have a huge number of online coaches as well. So tell us about the working on versus the working in. So both yourself and Mike, you, uh, you, know, you effectively don't work in, you work mostly on. How would you describe the, what the typical week might look like for you guys? Yeah, and I like that you use the words in and on because they are completely different things. <laughs> um, at, the, at the start, we were very much, uh, well, when CrossFit Torian speaking, at the start we were very much in the business like I was doing everything from scrubbing the toilets to doing the, the website to, you know, signing up members to, you know, and, and my rule is, is that I'll never ask any of my employees to do something I haven't done or wouldn't do. And most of the time, you know, I've, I've done everything there is to do at that gym, you know, from scraping off chewing gum on the floor to whatever. Um, so, but, you know, and, and, and Mike is the same. Like we were very much both in the in the trenches, me from a, I guess, a business marketing perspective and him from a coaching perspective. He was coaching all the classes. Um, and now we've, I guess we've, you know, slowly over the years, we've taken very, very small steps out of that business um, while we're bringing people in to sort of, you know, take those reins. So we're really fortunate that we have a, you know, a great group of coaches. We've got a great gym manager in there. We've had awesome people over the years sort of help us um, take those steps away from the business so that now we're in a point where, as you say, we're work- working more on the business and I sort of, you know, look at it like it's this ship and, you know, we've got great people, um, you know, running the ship and then occasionally you just have to jump in and maybe just adjust adjust the rudder sometimes and just make sure that it's kind of, um, yeah, it, it's still tracking in the right direction. Mm. And then I guess back to the two businesses. Now we've got the Torian Pro, which effectively sits as standalone. Plus we've got Torian the gym, and both of them um, beautifully complementary to each other as well. Yeah, yeah, they're great. They they certainly um, complement each other. Um, and yeah, I'm very much in a position now with the event that I'm working in the event, and I'm trying to, as the event grows um, and more resources become available you know, take those small steps so I can work more on the event and, um, you know, look at some bigger picture stuff to, to just really take it to the next level. But I think it's important, you know, um, you know, if you want to get into that leadership role of running a business, you, you have to have worked in a business to really understand that and to sort of add value. So I think it's been a really great, I guess, progression for me from, you know, being in the trenches with CrossFit Torian to now... Um, being in more of like a leadership role um, and now with the event like we've built that literally built that thing from the ground up I mean the first Torian Pro we were building our own equipment you know and now we've got Rogue the biggest equipment company on the planet you know giving us equipment so um, you know we've been able to build that slowly but it's been an important you know journey and, and learning for me to be able to do that to get to to where I am now. Love it, man. So good. Let's talk. get it down into a little bit of the detail. So uh, in, in terms of achieving that growth, some might hear 400-odd members and all the people at Torian Pro. Have you have you done that mostly through organic marketing? Have you run paid ads? Can you shed a bit of light on that part? Yeah, I've essentially done it all. Um, so, and it kind of depends on, it, it depends on a few things. It depends on the, to- the type of business to, to your your mix, I guess, of, of marketing communications. It depends on the audience, and then it and and then it's also it also evolves. Like what I was doing five years ago, ten years ago is very very different to what I'm doing now. So, um, you know, a great example of that is you know Instagram and Facebook were just the the major social media platforms for so long, and then in comes TikTok, and it just blows everything out of the water. But if you're not able to create appropriate content for TikTok, you just you know, you just get squashed. Um, you know, you've, you've, your content has changed a lot from just inspirational images and things like that to more of like an educational and entertainment perspective. And that's where TikTok has really excelled. Um, 
Now that's just one example, but you know, for, for all the businesses, I've done everything from search engine marketing. So that's, um, you know, incorporates display, um, uh, search engine optimization, um, where you're optimizing your website organically to, sh- to rank high. Um, search engine marketing is where you're essentially paying for that. So that's through display ads or that when you, you know, type in Google and you look at the top and you see those sponsored kind of results, um, people are paying, they're bidding on keywords to kind of you know, rank there. Um, and that's always a powerful, I've always found a powerful tool is, um, you know, it's it's more of a, a pull strategy versus a push strategy. So me, you know, I'm paying for Facebook ads, I'm pushing my message onto you, into your feed. But when someone's going into Google to, to search for something, they're showing the intent mm. and you just need to be there um, in, in front of them. You know, they're wanting to make that move and, and you just need to be there for them to take that action. So um yeah and obviously you know over the years i've delved a lot in video content creation um that's that's probably the most powerful marketing tool but again you need to um develop the right content for the right channel um and and have a great mix across you know all your platforms Mm. so in amongst that definitely paid ads is what you've used and you found benefit in that but on the on top of that really it sounds like the organic and i guess the way i view the content you've put it together is best practice you want this to be look crisp you want it to 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 hit the mark and that's where a lot of your focus has been yeah absolutely so generally when you're like my strategy is you know when you're launching a business you are going to have to spend money on 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 things like paid ads Mm. until you've built that audience and then you can leverage that audience through organic content um, to sort of, you know, help grow that and lower your spends as, as time goes on. Um, but depending on what your brand is, you need to, and ours was very much along the lines of like, we wanted to elevate, I guess, what people traditionally thought of a, of a CrossFit gym, which was just like rough and ready and, you know, crappy images and great, you know, all this. So we, we tried to just bring a more professional element um into our marketing so that the you know the images looked great you know the videos are well produced and and you know just look better just look more sort of motivating so that was yeah a big part of the strategy was um not only just creating this content but making sure that it looked really really good when you know when it landed on your feed yeah would that and if people listen to this or tuning in want to check this out straight away would you say your instagram be the best place for them to look or the first place to look yeah, Instagram's a good one. Um, you can kind of scroll back through the history and I guess see it kind of evolve from, you know, where it first started when we were first leaking the, the you know, the uh, the teaser images that were pretty <laughs> rough and ready to, you know, when I went and bought a professional camera and just, you know, started started my own in-house marketing agency. <laughs> <laughs> and that's at, that's at? Oh, at CF Torian. CF Torian and then Torian Pro at? Yeah, at Torian Pro. Sweet. All right, let's talk now about uh, gym owners as such. So being a gym owner, if, if someone was to go to you, hey, man, can you give me you know three uh, key plays that I could do or implement in my gym, um, what might they be? Yeah, so it's a great question because there's, there's plenty. <laughs> um, <laughs> how much time have we got? <laughs> um, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, there's a few key ones that, that I live by. In my um, in my business playbook, um, and top of the list, and it's one of my favourite sayings is is ideas are cheap. Um, everyone has ideas, right? Um, but what will set you apart is being able to execute, being able to execute well, and then being able to ex- execute well as the years tick over. Um, you know, how many times have you seen that that post come out on social media? Big things coming, and they you know people posting their brand new logo and talking about how uh, great this new business is going to be. And then in 12 months later, the classic, oh, we're closing down, we're, we're going to focus on other things and, you know, that post rolls out. So, you know, don't get me wrong, it's, it's, it's awesome to get excited about new ideas and, and the potential of those ideas. Mm. But you have to remember that that's the easy part. That's, that's the free part, costs you nothing. Um, the challenge lies in, you know, the, your ability to execute. Um, so going back to a point I made earlier, you need to work out what you need to execute. And part of that is knowing what you know and more importantly, knowing what you don't know. Um, and then on top of that, you just need to be prepared to work really, really hard for a really, really long time. Like if there's one thing that 
um, all successful people have in common is that they have all worked incredibly hard and they'll all probably tell you that there's no such thing as an overnight success story. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's probably, you know, a, a key thing for me. And um, number two, it, you know, might be a little bit sort of cliche, um, but don't half-ass it. <laughs> you know, don't half-ass it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can't be afraid to take a risk um, and swing for the fences because anything worth doing is worth doing well. Um um, but I'm not talking about sort of, you know, when I'm talking about taking risks, I'm not talking about being, being reckless. Um, you know, risks need to be calculated. But at some point when you're looking at a new business and you're d- you've done all your research, you've done all your planning, you've done all your financial modelling, there comes a point when you just need to back yourself um, and you need to back yourself into success and you just need to make sure that you've gone all in and you haven't half-assed it. So I can love it. Mic drop moment there from the big Snape doll. Oh, just mate. <laughs> um, and number three, I've got a couple of bonus ones at the end of this too, mate. Um, <laughs> I love it. Uh, number You're th- going to get the extended version, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> number three uh, is, you know, be authentic. Um, and the best way to do this, in my opinion, is to create something that you are passionate about and something that you believe in and something that adds value to people's lives so additionally to the you know to this point is um you know you can't necessarily pander to um you know people's every whim because people can be you know extremely unreasonable and that can sort of lead to lead to a burnout as a business owner so um you know you need to get into this position and it's taken me a long time because you know i'm a little bit of a people pleaser and it's taken me a long time to get there is getting comfortable knowing that as a business owner, especially in the fitness industry, you're not going to be able to make everyone happy all the time for their entire fitness journey. Um, but all you can be at the end of the day is just you know, be a good person, stay true to what you believe in, um, build a brand and a product that adds value to people's lives, execute well, and, um, and you'll attract the right people that appreciate you. So beautiful, man. Yeah, love mate. it, love it. And I got a little you bonus. Got I got a bonus. Love it. This is, you know, this is uh, the extended version. If you, <laughs> if, you, if you lasted this long in the podcast, you get an extra bonus. Yeah. And this is probably one of my favorites. It's you have to walk the walk before you talk the talk. So, and 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 I relate that to to a marketing perspective. So, marketing is great, but if your product sucks, marketing is just going to expose that faster. So make sure that you you know spend a lot of time perfecting your product, making it great, and then go out and spend, you know, money on marketing, create your strategy, do all those things. So it's, it's, it's really important. Like a lot of people come out hot out of the gate with all these big promises and this and that, and they've got all this, you know, flashy marketing and logos and, and all this sort of stuff, and, but there's no substance behind that. So, yeah, and, and, you know, that's what I, you know, everything I love about marketing for me is, you know, being able to do that, but then backing it up with a great product. Mm. So, so true and great words, man. I love, love the way you shared that and so articulate. No surprises that you guys have achieved what you've achieved, right? Me hearing all this. Yeah, mate, it's been a, um, it's been a really awesome journey. I think, you know, the best thing from going from, um, you know, where I was in the corporate world and, you know, many, many years, um, you know, doing that to, I guess, being, you know, an entrepreneur was just being able to, um, you know, have this ultimate sense of freedom and creativity and, you know, just to work on the things that you're really passionate about and, yeah, and, and you know, build a brand that, you know, people love. So it's, it's been really, really hard work. Um, you know, I hate that saying, find your passion and uh, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. Like, that's bullshit. Um, <laughs> find your passion and you'll want to work every day in your life. Um, and that's how kind of I feel. Like I'm excited to get up, you know, every day and go to work and, you know, build, keep trying to improve the business, um, you know, look for other opportunities and things like that. So, yeah, it's been an amazing journey. A lot of hard work but extremely rewarding at the same time. Yeah. We have, we have so many uh, fitness professionals who tune into this, um, business owners, uh, people who are ev- everything from people starting out right through. So I know in amongst all this, there's going to be uh, the message that hits the, the right person you know, at the right time 
which is going to be significant for them and just so so inspiring and motivating. Tell us a bit about uh, what the future plans hold because I guess, you know, we look back on the last eight or so years and you go built, you know, two successful models, gym, um, standalone event. What does the future look like? Yeah, nail salons, I think. <laughs> um, no, no. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Do they make money? <laughs> are they are they marketable? That's the question. <laughs> uh, no, I think um, yeah. So it's it's a timely question because we are currently in negotiations of a lease on a new space. Um, Ooh, yeah. So we're we're expanding our gym footprint into a into another location. Um, it's going to be a complementary offering to what we do in the CrossFit space um, and sort of tap into a few things that we're really passionate about outside of CrossFit, which is, you know, things like golf. And um, so, yeah, we're really excited to, you know, hopefully um, these negotiations go well and we can get this lease sorted and then we can kind of make the big announcement of, of the plans. But Ooh, I, man, that's juicy. Yeah, it's and massive, mate. It's... um. It's it's it definitely felt like time. The last twelve months has kind of been like, yep, the gym's doing what it is. It's a great business. It's a great community. Um, you know, the event is what it is, um, and it just felt like the right time to you know, you know, and I'm always on the lookout for for new opportunities. Um, and this one kind of um, yeah landed at the right time when we were really keen to sort of take that next step. And I guess go through the whole process that we've done with CrossFit Tour and the event. Like, you know, you're staring on the barrel of a new business. You know, you're going through all your planning, um, all your modelling, you're assessing your risk. Um, yeah, and like I said before, we've just gotten to that point now that, like, do we back ourselves to make this awesome or not? And, yeah, and, and so we went for it. Love it, man. Well, again, if they made it this far into the podcast and this could be the uh, yeah. the juicy moment where that gets leaked, hey? That's it. How cool. Stay tuned. <laughs> Big things coming. <laughs> wait for the post here yeah, it is. yeah yeah wait for the post man i'll try and word it a little differently so i don't uh, contradict myself you know? uh, so i guess to wrap all this up you know i guess first things first being you know witnessing this firsthand being a part of it and so forth has been an absolute pleasure huge congratulations to yourself uh big coach mike towner um, and, and the, what you guys have created. So, mate, just, just completely inspiring on all levels. So I want to say from myself, from all the Trader HQ community, everyone tuning into this, that at all the speak on behalf of all the people at Tori and Tori and Pro have experienced that as well. Mate, a huge thank you. Appreciate it, Brado. It's great to have you, mate. It's great to be here. <laughs> great to great to have the big snake dog live. Mate, not, not that big. Jesus, these you know, <laughs> biceps are killing me. I need to get back to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> So thanks for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, and um, stay tuned. More to come with your Ignite Your Ultimate Success podcast. Bye for now.